Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. And Black 2, movie thoughts. So, I find it interesting that they managed to write a line of dialogue that even Tommy Lee Jones could not imbue with any dignity. You know, the, the line about, it rains because you're sad. You know, I, I don't know, I just, I think before this movie, people thought that he was all done with, with kind of, you know, hokey performances and lines of dialogue after Batman Forever. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that must have taken a big chunk out of, you know, any, any kind of, if, if he needed to let off steam in, in that regard. So let's talk about the inconsistencies for a bit. Not only is the, the thing about, you know, oh, you only have an hour to, you know, get this thing off Earth. Not only is that a complete ripoff from the first movie. I mean, it's just, it's just not even remotely interesting. It's, it's, it's the exact same situation, basically. But it's also just completely unexplained. I mean, in the first movie, it makes perfect sense. You know, it, it's not like... It's not a something where you'd say, well, that's what I would do in that situation, but eh, this, there, there are Killians, you know, you don't know their culture, so maybe that's how they act, you know. It's, and in this, but, but yeah, you know, it, it makes sense. In this, it's just, oh, well, you know, if it doesn't get off the planet by midnight, then, you know, blah, 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 explosion. And, yeah, so, okay, why? And, you know, earlier in the film, they actually, you know, Sir, at first Serlina says, you know, that if, if it's not, no, no, not Serlina, the, the guy, Jack K Kaler? if that's how you pronounce his name, the guy says to Serlina, by midnight, you know, if you, if you haven't gotten it, then it will leave the planet of, you know, the, the third planet. Yeah. And then suddenly it's, oh, it'll explode. And yeah, this is apparently accurate. Or yeah, it, it, like I say in the review, it's, as if they're just making it up as they go along. Like with the opening credits, with how, you know, one thing is that she's blowing up planets when it was said that she's, like, looking for, you know, the light of Sartha. I mean, even if she's, like, frustrated and just taking out her anger on random planets, wouldn't she really be kicking herself if it turned out that the light was on one of those planets? But yeah, anyway, the ship appears to be what we'd consider a normal size. We're a spaceship, and then suddenly it lands on Earth, and ooh, it's tiny, you know, and that makes no sense with the size of the planets blowing up. The, the padding is also quite a bit... Uh, yeah, anyway, the, the... First, I gotta finish on this point. The... The, the bit about, you know, it'll explode. It's not explained, and it's basically just so they can have a ticking clock for the climax. You know, we just need something that's, ooh, dangerous, and, you know, we need to get from here to here before, you know, this point in time. It's just, it's extremely lazy writing. You know, they could have come up with some explanation for why, you know. Heck, here, right off the top of my head. Serlina's people were gonna blow up the planet, were gonna blow up Earth, if 
the light was still on the planet. And so, or, yeah, well, maybe not certainly as people. Let's say that the, the Sar Sarthan, whatever, the, yeah, Sartha, the Sartha people were going to blow up the planet that the light was on if they feared, you know, because of fear that Serlina might get their hands on it if it hadn't been sent back to their planet by midnight. There you go. That's an explanation. You know, nothing like that was actually stated in the film. And I'm, I'm willing to bet the reason something like that wasn't the explanation is the studio were terrified that, you know, again, even though it worked in the first one, I mean, by the end of the first one, do you, like, you know, get up off your seat and think, oh, man, those are Killians, you know, bastards. No, it made sense. It was, you know, it was a good conflict. But in this one, you know, the studio were just like, oh, I don't know, we don't really want people who are on our side to be, like, you know, doing any kind of aggression towards us, you know, it's, you know, might upset some people, you know, it just... And that's why the film is as bland as it is with, yeah, it also explains the love interest. And the, but, but yeah, you know, stuff like how Frank the Pug is suddenly an agent. I mean, working at MIB and, yeah, suddenly he becomes an agent, they... The whole point of the, you know, the, the Men in Black operation is that they are inconspicuous, you know, it's just, oh, government agents, I guess, you know, I should probably just do as they say, you know, or they could cause me a lot of trouble. But in this, it just, it makes no sense. It literally makes no sense. And it's not even a funny joke, you know, it's it's the dumb kind of joke that you even like a family film, you know, ooh, let's dress up a dog, ooh, it's a talking dog, you know, it, and it's, again, it's not like it says something funny, and then they have all that stuff, like, oh, he's like acting like a dog, and, you know, talking about how he's gonna have sex with this or that dog, and, you know, he hangs his head out the window, you know, was, just not funny, and then we have, you know, they're, they're at the end, you know, they're all talking about... If, I suppose, the, the parallel, you know, when they're, they're talking to Jay about, you know, oh, well, you know, you lost the woman you loved and stuff like that. I mean, one, one thing is that they barely knew each other, you know, it was like a day or something that they knew each other. And, you know, the, the kiss, I don't know, I didn't really feel a particular chemistry between them. I mean, I could tell from, like, lines and basically, you know, that there was some kind of sympathy there, that they, you know, they liked each other, I guess, and maybe in time, but they just met each other. It just, yeah. Anyway, the... And, and by the way, also how, you know, he just walks up to her and says, Oh, by the way, I'm Agent J. Yeah, what happened to the cover names that they always used in the first movie? You know, they were always like, Well, this is Dr. Something Something, and we're from this or that organization that, you know, you've heard about and you would work with. So, yeah, it just... Oh, hey, we're the Men in Black. I'm Agent J. You know, would you like to tell us about your alien encounter? You know, it just... The, like, the one time where they actually, you know, talked about aliens in the first movie with civilians was with the woman who, you know, who they needed... I suppose they need some information from Laura like that, but just at least say you're FBI or something. Anyway. Yes, that. so that final scene... Briefly, I just got to discuss the... The ending is again, you know, just just like the first one, only completely nonsensical and yeah. Okay, so was that like inside the earth that there were all those excuse me, aliens? Were they were they no excuse me, I mean they they were at MIB headquarters. MIB headquarters is in Manhattan. How could they open a door and there's just all these people who are much you know, all these aliens who are much bigger than they are. Again, just 
It makes no sense. And the door that they open, you see on the other side that there are, you know, a ton of these lockers. There were no doors to those other lockers. It was like the one door that was there. You know, it just, it, it blows my mind that they didn't for one second stop and think, this makes no sense. Shouldn't we just, shouldn't we just spend a little bit of time trying to think of something that actually makes sense. The, the ending to the first one is perfect. You know, and this one also just completely screws with the, you know, the first one really nicely treats this idea of, you know, the, the, the theme of perspective. The idea that something being small might still be important, and that something being big doesn't necessarily mean it's very important. In this one, you just have, you know, oh, you have that tiny little worm that's then, you know, a huge worm, and then, you know, he's talking about, it. oh, you know, that thing at your, at your wrist, it, it could still be important, but it's not even, you know, it isn't the light, it's just it guides them there, you know. Anyway, yes, so that scene, you know, ripped off from when in the first one, you know, they, they just swapped around. In the first one, it was Kay having, you know, love troubles. They shouldn't even, they, they, they should be banned from referencing that scene, because it is a beautiful scene in the first movie, and it was actually followed up on, and they completely screwed over the perfect ending that they gave Kay. So, yeah, it just, it's infuriating. Babe, anyway, if it had just been J and K talking, you know, about how he might be having trouble dealing with the laws, that would be fine. But no, you know, again, that was how it was in the first one. It was just J and K. I mean, it's a slightly funny scene, but you, you're not really laughing at K and like his pain or something. That would be disgusting. No, you are laughing sort of with him. You are, you kind of, you know, you're like, oh, and I know how he must be feeling. I did, that must really suck, you know. And you're, it's a very human moment. And I think that's sometimes the best kind of comedy where you can really relate to what's going on. But in this, it's just, you know, oh, hey, by the way, you want to hear sex stories? We've got an old guy and a dog. You know, I mean, how funny is it that old people might be having sex? I mean, is that, can, can you think of something more gross? And automatically, that is the most hilarious thing in the world. I really have no idea why, why people are so freaking bothered by the concept of old people having sex. I, enlighten me. Anyway, the... The character, Johnny Knoxville's character, I, did he even have a character name? Anyway, Knoxville just disappears near the end of the, I guess halfway through the film. I, I think actually the last time we actually see him in the film is with, with like, Kay. Yeah, and he doesn't even, he just, he just disappears, actually. I'm, I'm pretty sure he was like talking to the, you know, they, they were talking about, you know, oh, we're gonna, you know, they, they were bending Jay, as they put it. You know, the, the scene with the alien who has crap for a head. Because, you know, when isn't, you know, excrement funny? You know, that a good example of the really, literally, crappy alien designs. You know, it's, it's completely uninteresting. What a waste of Rick Baker. Anyway. Yeah, so... You know, I, th I think that's the last time we see him, and he doesn't even, he's not defeated in that scene. I mean, the, the other aliens are, but, yeah. And, and then, like, the worms mention, you know, oh, a, a dumb guy with two heads. And that's the last time he's ever referenced, you know. And it's not like Sorlina says, you know, ah, he was too stupid, I had to let him go. That would actually have made sense. Why didn't she try to get, like, a, you know, a good sidekick, a good right-hand man, you know. And then you've got the, the, that big alien, you know, or at first you think it's a big alien, but it's really, you know, it's that guy who's flying around and then he's got like three versions of himself underneath that cape, also moving around. I have to wonder if Jay brought him in, why didn't he know that there were those copies? He seems surprised. You know, when, you know, when, when they start attacking him, he's like, ah, you know, but didn't he know, did, 
if 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 he didn't have them before he was brought into MIB, did he make them between Serlina taking over MIB headquarters? Which is ridiculous, by the way. She just walks in, flashes her boobs, and starts taking over. But, you know, like I allude to in the review, with how retarded the MIB personnel seem in this movie, I buy it. I actually believe that she could take it over. That, you know, they, they wouldn't have some kind of contingent... In the first movie, I would have believed for certain that they would have some kind of some kind of screening process and like you know security systems. But in this one, yeah, I I quite believe they they all seem really stupid. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so the the big guy and and that entire fight, by the way, is also just. Clearly, you know, it's it's the bug fight from the first one. It's just a couple of flying dudes instead. You know, it's 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 the same it's the same formula. And again, in the first one it was kind of funny. You know, you, you had this situation where they really needed to you know, he was like basically the, the only hope and uh, there was a ticking clock and yeah, he had to, to try to take out this, you know, this alien art deal. Prevent it. Stop it. And and it's also just it's it's also funny because he he only heard about the bug recently and he only just became an agent at all. So yeah, he's a rookie and suddenly he's fighting you know this giant cockroach. And in this he already knew the the guy, so he should have known what he could do, and yeah, it's just, it's also just too played for laughs. I, I never felt, it. the entire movie, like I said in the review, is not tense. There is nothing tense or exciting in this entire film. So anyway, the... And, and also the, the, you know, the, the car... You know, the first one, yeah, you know, in, in the first one you have one driving extremely fast, and in this one it's suddenly, you know, a rocket ship, and yeah, you know, because that's how you punch that up, and again, it's just not all that interesting, and, you know, the, the neuralizing stuff, I mean, in the, in the first movie, they would they they seem to really take into account that you know neuralizing it, it there there would still be people around who might have seen something or you know in in this one they just seem like they don't even care the the when they're fighting jeff at the beginning how does no one see that you know other than you know once it starts eating a subway car the people on the subway car notice it but that's it, you know. The fight in the in the basement of Jeeb's place was just really, really boring. I guess basically they were trying to make for a badass return for K. You know, it's it's basically Agent K's introduction in the film. You know, it's the first time we really see Agent K, so he has to kick ass. I can appreciate that, but it just really makes them seem weak, and it makes Jay look like a just nothing of an agent, you know. Yeah. Now, and, and the, but, but yeah, the, the way, you know, each of them is just this, you know, oh, you can just defeat them by poking them there, punching them there, or kicking them there, you know, that's it. it it's just extremely boring, you know, it, I think it would have been good if there had been, like, one, like, the, the, maybe the top criminal she released, and it's like, you know, this great, you know, yeah, whatever, and... 
Jay can't quite defeat him, but he maybe like, you know, slows him down a little bit, and then K finishes him off or something so that Jay would still have some dignity, and it wouldn't make these, you know, extremely dangerous aliens look like complete pansies. How many times does Serlina have to die in this movie? You know, it's like they just... Yeah, it's it's extremely padded, you know. The, First, they shoot her, and she's clearly pulverized, you know. Again, in the first film, they shoot the bug, but if you look at it, the head is still intact. You know, it's like, it's it's shot in half, and the tail goes one side, and the, the head goes off to the other side. And, yeah, it's still moving. It's a cockroach! You know, it makes sense, you know, you... you yeah, try dealing with cockroaches in real life, you know, that's, it's just kind of how they, you know, yeah, in this one, nope, she's completely ball wars, but then, oh, there's this tiny little bit there at the end, you know, and yeah, it, it seems like it maybe was supposed to be the end there, based on how the effect was designed, and then suddenly the studio's like, oh, we, we really want, you know, the bad guy to you know, be there at the climax, and then they're like, okay, well, we'll shoot this thing where it seems to be coming back to life, you know, and, and then suddenly she has, you know, this spaceship, and is flying it, yeah. Was that the spaceship that the, the Jara guy built for her, or what? I thought the worms turned off the power to that. The worms, by the way, are just only in there to, you know, be, they're, 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 running gags, basically, as is Frank the Pug. You know, and again, in the first movie, you see Frank the Pug and you see the worms for a minute, maybe two. And that's it, because they're not that funny. They're, they're slightly interesting. It's this thing of, you know, oh, we have worms in the coffee room, and, you know, you know, you think it's the, you know, the guy who's, who looks really dead, who's like, you know, poorly disguised alien, but nope, it's the dog, you know, and, and then suddenly you have a scene of Tommy Lee Jones shaking a dog in broad daylight, and, you know, Will Smith is like, oh, don't worry, you know, uh, uh, the, the dog owes my friend money, you know, and that's funny, but constantly having them around, them constantly jabbering on, is not funny, you know. And, and yeah, and bringing the worms, and suddenly they have guns that fit the, the, you know, the, that the worms can, you know, carry, and yeah, it's just so that, you know, you can have this, oh, look, you know, we got armed worms breaking into a place. They actually, they don't even seem to really do anything, you know. I, yeah, they, they turned off, like, the power, but was that even to the right? And then, again, suddenly, Serlina's in a spaceship, so I guess they didn't turn off the power. So, yeah, it was completely useless to even bring them. So yeah, they, they shoot Serlina, she's pulverized, but no, oh, she's still alive. She gets eaten, but no, oh, wait, she's still alive. And then they shoot her, and she blows up, and apparently she is now dead. You know, that's... Anyway, I don't even care, actually. I, I would not watch another minute of the movie by the end of this movie. It just... yeah. And the... just... You know, when Jeff returns and suddenly he, like, explodes out and then Serlina is inside. How did she make that happen? You know, I could maybe imagine if, if, there, were, if there was a gun involved or something, but nope, she's just... Does she just spread out and it just explodes from, like, the, you know, the... What's it called? Yeah, from, you know, the, the impact, or whatever, yeah, yeah, it just, it, it makes no sense. Then we have, and, and, you know, when, when Kay's shooting at it, you know, at, at first it just seems to take, like, forever, and suddenly he just shoots at it some more, and then, oh, no, it's apparently practically defeated now, and then it, you know, launches that final Serlina head. I love how they assume that every MIB agent must already be wearing his sunglasses when they trigger that or when K triggers the massive one, you know, at the, in, in the Statue of Liberty. You know, it just kind of, yeah, well, 
okay, I guess everyone, you know, who wasn't wearing sunglasses. And that actually does kind of make me think, I don't know, in the first one, I didn't really think about it, because it also did. Again, in the first one, it's localized. When they neutral, when, when, yeah, when, when they neutralize someone, it's like, okay, so could I have everyone's attention, please look into this. In this, they're just like, oh, well, we fly over stuff, so we should probably neutralize. What if some of those people are wearing sunglasses? Is it regular sunglasses? I don't know. Whatever, maybe it's not regular sunglasses, maybe it is like especially built sunglasses, but still, stuff could, what if there was like a TV crew there and they filmed and they got footage of the flying car, or they got footage of, you know, the, the alien action, you know, the giant worm, or the giant Serlina, and you know, all this stuff, it just, yeah, it, it just, doesn't make sense, you know, I, sure, the, the very climax is somewhat, you know, it's, it's away from people, but it just, in the first one, it really didn't seem, also the, I think they, they messed up the continuity, well, they did mess up the continuity, on the, the tiny gun, noisy cricket, I think that's what the gun is called, in the first one, you know, you were, like, propelled backwards, and it caused an explosion, in this one, some of the times K uses it, it just kind of knocks people back. You know, it doesn't even, like, cause a wound, actually, I think, on some of those, you know, criminals. So, yeah, that just... You know, I, I get it. You know, there, there are two humanoids, so if, the, if it caused a wound, they'd lose their PG-13. I am really surprised they didn't lose it at the Balchinian gag, but... You know, whatever, the MPAA has, you know, has its priorities. I think that pretty much covers the film. I can mention another example of how little they do to try to hide their operation in this. The, the when when they get flushed, you know, they just land in just in the middle of a busy street. It's just, what is? It's it's like it's, I don't know. Maybe it's supposed to be funny in this that they're not even trying to hide their operation, and yet no one discovers it. But again, in the first film, it was part of the you know big part of what they were doing. You know, it was like I mean, when Jay messes up and, you know, can't remember the the name, the fake name that Kay made up on the spot for himself. You know, and he's like, uh, Doctor, whatever, come here, please. And Linda Fiorentino figures it out, you're like, oh, crap, Will messed up, you know. It actually, it's a moment, you know, you, you, it has an impact. But in this, it just, if they don't care about their main objective, then why should we at all care about the movie? You know, they, they, they're they there to make sure that we don't know that there are aliens in New York and, you know, other places in the world, but apparently mainly in New York. So, yeah, it, why, yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.